Well, it is Friday night again. Welcome back, Free Torques, to the Kratu Orloff Friday Night Extravaganza. It's our very own Hootenanny a go go here. We're going to have lots of folk music, a lot of picking and grinning, comic books, horror movies, all kinds of shit here on the Great Kratu Orloff Show, episode 476 tonight. Brought to you, ladies and gentlemen, by 007 Cologne. Uh, this is the shit, ladies and gentlemen. Little dabble, do ya? <laughs> 007 Cologne, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a little song I wrote back in 1960. Comics does a man have to buy before you call him a man? How many shits must Joe Biden have to do before his pants are full? And how many times must Pokemon cards be put out before they're forever banned? The answer free talks is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the motherfucking wind. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. And you know something, ladies and gentlemen? Here we are, Friday night once again. Uh, um, and Pete is with us. Pete the Cat. Um, let me show you Pete the Cat. Because you may not believe me that such a celebrity is here. Hello, Pete the Cat. How art thou? Here he comes, here comes Joe Biden. He's a demon on wheels. He's a demon and he's gonna be chasing after someone. <laughs> He's falling up the stairs. He's just a plus tax. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Go. <laughs> no politics, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for comical books. Pokemon, man, it's cool, man. Let's let's talk about Pokemon and Magic: The Gathering. How wonderful you can you can train to be a Pokemon, man. I actually know nothing about Pokemon. I got this free box though; it was being thrown away because I thought I could put something in it. But uh, <laughs> I hate this shit. Okay, so I've been order uh, I've been organizing my comics. I thought, well, okay. I separated Silver Age from Bronze Age. Okay, that was done. Then I decided, well, I really ought to separate by uh, other companies other than Marvel and DC. So I, start, I took out the Gold Key, the Charlton, the Disney, the Archie, the Dennis the Menace comics. And then I realized I ought to separate Marvel and DC. Most comic stores do that. And then I realized maybe I should separate all the horror, all the Marvel horror, all my Tomb of Dracula's, Werewolf by Nights, uh, uh, Dead of Nights, uh, Man Things, have those all in separate boxes. And then I should maybe separate my romance comics, not that I have that many of them, unfortunately. And then I started, I'm, I'm, uh, Western, I, I'm going mad with the separation. It's a uh, sickness here on the Gratuor Love Show. Anyway, that's what I'm uh, doing here on this uh, late Friday evening. Um, tonight I'm going to try to make a guest appearance on England Teen's uh, comic reading uh, show where they uh, uh, read from comics and act out the stories. And tonight they're going to be doing Hostess Twinkie ads and Ding Dong ads from uh, the Bronze Age. 
I don't think those those add, those lasted much past the Bronze Age. But have you uh, tried your 007 cologne yet? Uh, where should I put that? Okay, well, let's see. Um, we'll start here in this room, and then we'll move to the other room. Um, just a moment. Yeah, um, would you prepare uh, room three? Because we're going to be coming in there with a load of comics here in a moment. Thank you. Let's go, Brandon. Okay. Well, we'll have more songs later. Let's let's first uh, take a look at some comical books. You know, uh, I last appeared on the Halloween broadcast, and uh, that caused me to lose a subscriber and then um, two people put the symbol of hatred the thumbs down on that broadcast and then I lost another follower another subscriber when I posted some videos of my dog but then someone else subscribed so now I'm back up to 308 subscribers 308 human beings that follow Dr. Gratu Orloff here on uh, the Gratuor Life Inspirational Network. So, people don't approve of my content here. Communist, socialist, possibly. Okay, so I'm gonna, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you can go back and confirm it. I was on Graphic Man's Wednesday night show and I said, what's gonna happen next? Is there gonna be some flaming comet that's gonna be controlled by Joe Biden or something? And and I said it. I, then the next day, and then the new. Well, actually, no. What it was is I showed this cover, and I said this will probably be what happens next. And I swear, the next day in the news, there was something about a red com, uh, meteor or something. So, uh, so I'm like, uh, what's his face, uh, the sleeping prophet, huh? Okay, so let's get these horror comics in a separate zone. Here's Weird, Weird Mystery Tales. Great cover. Man, that light is just too bright, man. It's too piercing, man. Too piercing. Okay. I don't remember what comics I've shown you and what I've... Get this Pokemon shit off the screen. That's what happens when I just pick up shit you know, free shit, and I, I bring it into my uh, archives, and that it's in the background, and someone might think I'm a Pokemon moron. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Why, this is the third race. Damn light. Oh, uh. This is the, uh, this is the third race. This is the third time that Superman, God damn light, Superman, damn it, and the Flash competed in a race. You see, there's uh, lots of people there watching to see how it turns out. This is cool. Look at this. There's a paperback. I think Captain Strange Life sent this to me. Pretty sure. Okay. I, I haven't used it yet. Okay. So that's that. So that goes in one pile, superhero stuff. The horror stuff goes in this pile. Here's Shazam number two. They seem to be astonished. We'll put that over here. Uh oh, it's D-Day for the Flash. 
slash 187. Disastrous day, flash shrunken size, diabolical day, flash assumed a new identity, and doomsday flash becomes a bodiless uniform. All kinds of bad stuff. Always happening to the flash. Let's get these in alphabetical order, shall we? Here's Flash. It looks like he's breaking the teeth out of this uh, guy. The, uh, the chunk. He's almost like the Hulk, but not quite. He's the chunk. And Atlas Seaboard had the brute, and DC had the chunk. And Marvel had the Hulk, and I think Marvel probably is uh, the winner. Oh, see, this is one, you know, it says Flash number nine because they had to restart the numbering a million times. I hate that. Speaking of the Hulk, here's Marvel team up number 27. You know, I was going to do a big Christmas show today because it's apparently Christmas time because all the stores have their Christmas stuff up and figure that uh, it's Christmas time. Who's the artist on this cover? You recognize that artist? <coughs> okay. Oh, a floating head cover. Justice League of America, number 83. The uh, Justice League and Justice Society teamed up every summer. And, of course, this is the very early 70s, the dawn of the Bronze Age, when the horror comics were selling so well that the superhero comics kind of turned into... Uh, Restart to install the latest Windows updates, it's telling me. <laughs> the latest Windows updates, indeed. Yep, 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 yep. So, I don't know if you're watching Stargirl, but Thunderbolt appeared. And uh, there's a kid that's... God, that was... Uh, we're a few weeks behind. But, but the new Hour Man, who's a high school guy, he's like... I, I don't want to ruin the show for I'll give you a little you you need to be watching this show he goes out in the forest and he's like feeding uh, Solomon Grundy uh, and he leaves him some junk food and stuff and he comes back and it's gone that he's just taking care of Solomon Grundy and anyway he gets thrown in in a jail cell for you know doesn't you'll find out Anyway, he's in his jail cell, and, and three apples get thrown through the, the bars because Solomon Grundy's, like, paying him back, you know? And I thought, boy, this, this show was great. Uh, Dr. Fate. Yeah, Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Midnight appeared in the episode last night. He came out of some shadow realm, and he just looked, you know, in, in his prime. That was really cool to see, uh guy in a Dr. Midnight suit. Um, yep. So anyway, this is Justice League. So, J comes after F. At least it did in the alphabet before Joe Biden became president. Now who knows where J goes. He could go anywhere in the alphabet. Okay, a romance comic. My Love. So I'm going to start putting the My Love, uh, these romance comics in a Separate zone. Uh, I'll put them in this box. I'll put the horror and the romance in this box. Here's Tomb of Dracula 24. The mirror, you don't cast a reflection. Who are you? I am your death. Amazing, huh? They don't write comics like that anymore.
Astonishing Tales with Kazar and Dr. Doom. Everybody pronounces this differently. I pronounced it Kazar since I was like in second grade. So I pronounce it Kazar. Is it supposed to be Kazar? I don't know. I guess we could... I've got a, in a Ouija, Ouija board. People keep telling me I should burn it. But it was came down to me from my older brothers. And it's got a cool you know, 60s uh, design on the, you know, it looks like the specter on the, I look terrible, you know, yeah, no other, Every Captain Strange Life was asking me, you tired, and I look at the bad, the dark ring, I, I can't, I, I don't think I'm getting enough sleep, or I'm not getting enough restful sleep, I just wake up and I'm falling asleep all day long, anyway, yeah, tired, tired here in Gratuville. Oh, my car uh, is is uh, the t the engine uh, last Sunday crapped out. So I've been without a car since then. So the the guy that sold me the car is like the best mechanic in town. Like everyone agrees, everyone recommends him at all the auto zones and O'Reilly Auto Parts, and he's a really good guy. And I bought this car from him for like four grand several years back and it, it's a, like a, an old Subaru but he had the previous owner had never changed the oil and the engine was destroyed so he swapped the engine out for one that only had like 41,000 miles and then that engine's crapped out so he had to get another engine ordered for me that I just paid for and then he's going to install it hopefully it will be finished I already have the engine taken out by tomorrow evening Saturday evening so then I will have a car again. So right now, if I had to get anywhere, I'm having to take a lift or get a friend to, to uh, I've had some good friends drive me around a couple of places. Uh, Nick, who does that Channel Planet comic, you saw his fiance come on and promote that comic a few episodes back. He's given me some rides and that was very appreciated, but I can't keep bumming off people. So hopefully the car will be ready tomorrow. Um, anyway, I was like Kazar, or Kazar. You say Kazar, and I say Kazar. You say tomato, and I say tomato. Kazar, Kazar, tomato, tomato. Oh, let's call the whole thing off, right, motherfuckers? That's right, motherfuckians. Um, all you free torques and communists out there, um, you aren't all communists, but those of you that keep unsubscribing, man, giving me the thumbs down, you're just communist filth, clearly. All right, so, we'll just, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to separate Marvel and DC for right now. This is getting too, too confusing. Unexpected weird mystery. My friend Gerald will be visiting today and coming by a little shit a little bit earlier. So I probably need to get back in that other room down the down the hall. Oh, we're still looking at other houses. I found a house uh, here in Texas that's got 4,600 square feet, 1920s house. It's uh, a couple hours away from San Antonio, which is I can't decide if San Antonio or Virginia are my real homes you know as you get older you kind of want to go back to your you know, like an like an elephant goes back to where it was born I mean I was born in San Antonio and my mother grew up there but um, her ancestors were the first some of the first 300 families that came to Texas they call them the old 300 but we went back farther She's related to Robert E. Lee, and you know, Virginia is like the real mother country, but we thought, well, there's a great, some great houses in Virginia, but it has a horrible governor, and then the governor switched out the other night, and that was really, well, maybe Virginia's now on the table again, but now I'm hearing that he's a little bit, he's not as good as you think. I mean, he's better than the other choice, but he's kind of a Mitt Romney type. He was with the Carlisle group and the Bushes, so he may actually be a, not as uh, good as we were thinking. 
That's cool, that, that guy running for the uh, New Jersey Senate head or whatever that was like some trucker and he spent $150 on his campaign and he beat this this guy that spent over a million dollars. I thought that was pretty cool the other night. But we're not supposed to talk about politics here on the Garage World Up channel, you know. That's not a, not a cool thing to do. My love, the Tomb of Dragon. The Submariner. There were some kids in my school that thought it was the Submariner. I had to set them straight on that. Now that one, you know, you can call Kazar Kazar. I'll, I'll let that slide, because you're probably right. But it's definitely not the Submariner. Come on, let's... Uh... You know, I've been enjoying watching Shanghala. Uh, because what he does is he has he gets a short box of comics he works for this big comic store and they sort out all these comics they buy and uh, they, they have one YouTube channel called sell my comic books and on that channel they open up boxes and just see then look at the collections they bought from people that have been sh sent to them but then they pull out all the comics that they think are worth ten dollars or more and they put them in boxes and send them to this guy, Shanghai. His, his name is uh, Duke. And he, all you see are his hands, and he usually has a little action figure, like a Mego action figure there watching him. And he pulls out the comics and talks about each one and usually laughs. And he's, I have no idea what this guy looks like, but I picture Santa Claus because he laughs heartily like Santa Claus, and he just seems like such a friendly guy. But I, I, I learned a lot as he's looking at these comics, you know, because, uh, anyway, Shanghala Comics, and he's also the guy that flipped through all those Mexican Spider-Man comics, the work Gwen Stacy lived, and I loved that, so I heartily endorse Shanghala Comics, and, uh, um, so anyway, this is a great issue of Submariner, I think he was looking at this issue, uh, this, well, I was look, watching some of his old videos and this one popped up and he noted that this is looks like a much more old-fashioned looking cover not in a bad way than most comics from the early you know, 20 cent bronze age and that's because Bill Everett see his signature it looks like an artist palette isn't that great the original creator of the Submariner came back as an elderly guy and was working in the early 70s until he passed away. So these issues of the Submariner are great. And they're probably going to go up in value when idiots realize that he's going to be in the new Black Panther movie. So you probably ought to get them now. They've always been cheap. It's always been pretty inexpensive to amass Submariner comics from this time period. So, so get on it. Get off the pot. Shit or get off the pot or whatever they say. Oh, I always love this cover. The 20 cent era. Who was saying it? Was it uh, Eric Breen or one of Eric Breen's friends or somebody was saying you can't miss any 20 cent Marvel is uh, just amazing. I mean, look at that, man. Beautiful. It's just just beyond words great I want to open this thing up man I just this is the well this is the era when I first started buying comics like uh, like a fiend is during the 20 cent era let's see what we got sorry I guess I should show you guys that's the whole point of this show this record that's playing was always advertised in here Let's see if I can find the ad for this record that's playing in the background. It's usually in these comics. And you can just get this this audio right off of YouTube. Hail Odin, the true lord of Asgard. Amazing. Oh, look at this. See, that's what I love of these ads. This ad for Supernatural Thrillers with the Headless Horseman. I remember buying that comic as a little kid in uh, third grade. 
and I, I traced the cover. I just was obsessed with how cool that cover was with this, with him throwing, throwing his head at the guy the way Captain America would throw his shield or Thor would throw his hammer. Would have been cool if the Headless Horseman had just became a superhero and like was in the Avengers or something. And look at that. Look at this horny guy in the X-ray specs ad. Have you ever actually seen a copy of Grit, this newspaper they wanted kids to sell door to door? Uh, I've seen a copy. It just... This ad is was always really cool. It has just enough of the influence of underground comics to it. The Roach Studios. And some of the... Some of the shirt designs, like that guy smoking Panama Red right there in the center of the screen. It was weird they had these druggy influenced uh, designs um, right there next to uh, the kid designs. Yeah, and then Bud Man, the Budweiser little... Look at that. Boy, that 007 cologne sure is powerful. Um, anyway, the ad for this Halloween, Halloween record, horror record. Don't call them Halloween records because monsters are appropriate for all year long. They don't stop with Halloween. That's uh, communism. Uh, to think that uh, you have to put all your monster stuff away when Halloween is over. Total and complete Marxism. Uh, uh, Thor. So what time is it? Put in the comments down below what time it is. Here's Conan 35. Also a 20 center. Ah, Werewolf by Night 22. It's a 25 cent comic. Let's see if the ad for this record's in this one. Man, I gotta find that record ad. It's gotta be. It was in almost every single comic. See, this is nice. Look at how bright the back cover is. Okay, did you guys join Foom? Foom was uh, Friends of Old Marvel. It was the Marvel fan club from that time period. Here's another t-shirt ad with a very underground comics looking uh, design. This comic's not the best shape. Uh, look, you can get a thousand dollar look for only thirty-seven dollars for those of you on a budget that are wanting to get engaged. And you can also wear all these uh, German Nazi emblems uh, to your wedding. Yeah, that's a comic book ads yeah, for. Cherokee Bookshop. That's the shop where Billy Mooney shopped at uh, in Los Angeles. He actually recorded a song about the Cherokee uh, bookstore. Oh, look, so uh, here's you got your Tales of the Zombie ad. Here's your uh, Marvel value stamp. It's got Bucky, Bucky Barnes. Now, when you are looking at a quarter comic, 25 cent Marvel comics, you always need to open it up and make sure that the Marvel value stamp is there because a lot of times kids will have cut it out. Hey, look, man, that looks like the Toxic Avenger before. Now we see where the Toxic Avenger uh, stole the idea. That's the. I knew I'd find it. See that that ad there? That was the record I was just listening to. It's on uh, YouTube. It says, "Invite your friends over for a haunting." I'll read it to you. Ah, <laughs> uh, I need a new battery for my atomic uh, 
magnifying glass. Just imagine how scared your friends will be when you flip out the light and they start hearing creaky, creepy sounds like a creaking door, chains rattling, and then a man's voice telling them that the house is haunted and they are to die one by one. They'll be scared stiff when they hear footsteps coming across the floor, the sound of people fighting, glass breaking, hideous laughter, terrible shrieks and screams eerie moaning and then more footsteps more screams each person in the room will think that he is going to be the next victim sounds like kenosha wisconsin i've been watching the kyle rittenhouse trial a little bit kid like you know we, we have all these comics about these people these superheroes and then when someone does that in real life they're they're cons they're arrested but i guess you know what you know if you oh well uh, not to get political only a dollar plus 25 cents for postage and handling satisfaction guaranteed or money back this record is not sold in any store be the first to get it you have to send one dollar plus 25 cents for postage and handling to the gale house uh p.o box 512 flushing new york Oh, here's the ad for Howard Rogofsky. The bottom there, he was a major uh, dealer of comics back then, along with Robert Bell. Robert Bell kind of invented the comic bag. But Howard Rogofsky here, um, he's the guy that wrote that tape is on a comic is not a defect. <laughs> but yeah, he was grilled about that by the Comics Journal like decades later. He says, um, sorry, you know. 250,000 in stock. The complete Marvel and DC groups from 1900 to 1974. Also original art. Pulps, Toys, Doc Savage, Walt Disney, pubs, publications, movie items, etc. from 1900 to 1974. We also buy. Send selling list with prices. Giant catalog, 60 cents. I would love that giant catalog. That would be a real collectible. I bet Captain Strange Life's got one of those. I bet. You can also learn Kung Fu. Whoa, I know Kung Fu. Those Matrix movies are starting to seem a little more real recently, aren't they? <laughs> and Logan's Run and every dystopian horror movie we grew up with. Well, I was already grown up when the Matrix movies came out, but, but yeah, it's fun to live in a dystopian science fiction movie. Werewolf by Night. Giant sized werewolf. Oh, I just got the, the, the after credit scene spoiled for me. For Eternals, but I'm sure I'll forget what characters are show up in the after credits scene before I finally see the Eternals. I I hear the Eternals is crummy, but the fact that all these critics, like I think Eric Breen was pointing out, all these critics hate it, and maybe it's actually good. Um, here's the Man Thing number fourteen. Um, Which, uh, but there's a, a character, several characters that appear in the closing credits, which I won't spoil for you, but one that tells you that you need to start, if you haven't already, getting a certain line of comics from the Bronze Age before the investors or whatever you want to call them start buying them up because of this particular character appearing right now it's a character that only very few comic collectors even know who this guy is uh, uh, I can't tell you because it just doesn't seem right 
Because, you know, you say, well, just, you know, if you don't want it spoiled, just pause or, or fast forward. But someone may be listening to this while they're taking a shower. And then I say, well, just fast forward. And then they can't get out of the shower. And then they get it ruined for them. Here's the Journey into Mystery number 10. Nothing can match the sheer raw power of Tim Boo Ba, the world smasher. Earth defied me, and so the earth must perish. If I was a presidential speechwriter, I'd just get these old 1950s comics and just write word for word from what these giant monsters say. But uh, this is not a 50s comic, obviously. It's reprints of 50s uh, Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, Stan Lee monster stories. Which is, you know... I'm not old enough for the 50s the first go around, but I was reading this shit stuff. It's not shit. Why do I call this stuff shit? This wonderful stuff. The second go around, early 70s. Here's another uh, Werewolf by Night, number 30. I need to get these with my childhood Werewolf by Night comics. The Diabolical Dr. Glitter Knight was the werewolf, has the werewolf met his match at last, has he? Possibly. 28. This is a comic that came out about a month ago, made to look like a Silver Age comic. I don't, I haven't read it, so I don't really know what it is, but I, I just like the cover enough that I've got it. Exorcism, the Lord of Vampires and a Soul Shuddering Secret. Tomb of Dracula 23. Look at the comic's code is opaque. I think opaque is the word that means you can see through it, right? You dare not fail to read Shadow Over Haunted Castle. Twenty-three, Tomb of Dracula. Here's another Werewolf by Night, number thirty-one. I like the slobber coming out of those mouth. That could be copy written. Let's see that see down a little bit. Werewolf by Night 40. Look at that Kirby looking crackle. Looks like the werewolf is vaping or something. Or maybe he just has very bad breath. Topaz, Brother Voodoo and the Werewolf Trapped in the Deadly Dimension of Dr. Glitter Knight. So that's 40. And here's a late period Harvey comic with uh, Felix the Cat. And it says, uh, Art and Stories by Otto Mesmer. So, you know... Um, he was uh, the original creator of Felix the Cat. Felix the Cat was the first animated character, and I think um, a Felix the Cat, the first television uh, test of a television camera when television was being invented was of a Felix the Cat toy. Am I right on that? But um, see, the art looks like this. So it's obviously reprints. Um, so you know, this is past the period where I was reading Harvey comics. They even did a Back to the Future comic, and they had a they had a New Kids on the Block comic. Um, 
All kinds of weird stuff. Yeah, I don't know when this was reprinted from. Yeah, wait, maybe I can get some uh, clue here. Um, or maybe not. Sometimes when stuff is reprinted from older comics, they'll have the original uh, date, copyright date uh, there. At least Marvel would do that. So. Here's Cobra, not the Cobra that uh, fought uh, the G.I. Joe organization. Um, it's an earlier comic about an evil specter kind of uh, group called Cobra. Or, or is it, or uh, I guess I, I'm, I'm trying to remember, I think he might have been the leader of an evil group. Okay, so, uh, yeah, there's a comic about a bad guy, kind of like Fu Manchu, as I recall. Here's uh, the Flash walking off into the sunset, the double-sized last issue. Um... Do I want to spoil this? Um, here's Warlock number eight. Um, start picking up these Warlock comics. There's a, just a hint. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. But you know that already, that Warlock is coming in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But it'll probably be a teenage girl. Well, they already have a female version that's called Her, right? Why, it's my old pal, Ernie Chua, also known as Ernie Chan. And, and everybody, people are already picking up that I really like this artist because I'm always talking about him and raving whenever I find a cover. He uh, worked for Marvel and DC. He did a lot of Marvel um, Conan stuff. But uh, right around 75, 76 maybe into 77 uh, he did a lot of covers for DC and uh, he was I think from the Philippines and when he came over they wrote his name wrong and so he kept he started using it he just wrote his name the way they wrote it but later he changed it to Ernie Chan which is the real name but I, I just always thought his covers were very they grabbed me when I was a kid you know off the 7-eleven spinner rack I mean, it just, everything's drawn so well. I just like his style. Here's a very tall, stretched out Mr. Monster getting married. I think someone was pointing out, maybe it was Shanghala Comics. I was watching one of his videos today about how Mike Grell, when he was first starting, would, would really stretch out the the torsos of his characters, but here, uh, this is the artist that drew this, uh, is really stretching out Mr. Monster like he's been on a rack or something. <sighs> yeah, I've been getting a lot of Sergeant Furies lately. Here's Sergeant Fury and his Howling. This is a reprint. 111. Um, That, makes, that reminds me, oh, man, I gotta do stuff in the other room. Maybe I should organize these and then show them to you once they're organized. I don't know, man. My wife and I were really liking this t the TV show based on the novel American Gods by Neil Gaiman. And, and then I guess 
I guess it was a novel, and then a TV show, or was it a novel, then a comic book, and then a TV show. I don't know when this came out. I found it in a bargain bin. But, uh, it's uh, interesting. Basically, all the gods that anyone's ever believed in, um, as long as there's one person that still believes in them, they still exist. And uh, so you've got Odin and you've got uh, Ostere that Easter's based on. And yeah, there was a scene in the TV show where uh, Ostere or whatever she's supposed to have originally started as Isis or whatever that Easter is named after. And then there's all these different Jesuses, different very but all Jesus but looking a little different because of different uh, sects of Christianity that believe in, in a slightly different version of Jesus and they're all all the Jesus are apologizing hey I'm, I didn't mean to sorry about taking your holiday <laughs> and she, you know and she's good I don't know then there's Egyptian gods and it's it's in African gods and and then if uh, you know someone uh, moves across the ocean as an immigrant they bring their gods with them anyway all these old gods are fighting against you know are in this war against the new gods that are coming up like the god of the of tech these technological gods of the internet and social media all these these young new gods are the villains and so it's a interesting show it's in i, th I think it's going to start its third season and I got the book, but I haven't read it yet. So let's see what else I can show you real quick. Uh, I got this giant size Avengers the other day, which I probably already have. But you know, I'm not one of these people that pulls out my phone and I can I pull up what books I already have. I need to do that, but then it turns out you've got to pay for that. Uh, so uh, forget that. I'll just just try to remember which ones I've got. This is a very amazing gothic-looking cover, The Phantom Stranger. And this is one of the books I was really excited about getting. Hopefully I don't already own it. The Secret Lives of Joe Kubert. A tribute to him. And I uh, actually got a new book, Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, because I'm a fan of Sheena. And uh, I'll see what the interior of the book is like. It's, uh, let's see, the Chilling Adventures in Sorcery was a comic I got in second grade at the 7-Eleven in Hampton, Virginia. It was hosted by Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and it was drawn in the Archie House style. But the insides of the comic, the stories were so kind of twisted that the fact that it was drawn in that innocent Archie style was kind of kind of disturbing. And by the third issue, they started drawing it in more of a Gray Morrow looking traditional horror comic style. But those first two issues, see, this is done in a more of a traditional horror style. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, there's a book out, which I probably will never see. Halloween Spectacular, but because nobody carries Archie comics. Um, yeah, this is all uh, Archie and Sabrina related. But see, there's Archie and there's Jughead. But it's definitely not done in the traditional style. I, I wonder if anyone even knows how to do the traditional style anymore. There's Betty and Veronica. Um... Uh, Weird to see Archie covered in blood holding a cell phone. I, I don't know if I approve of that, but huh. Oh, and they've got this comic out, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. That is interesting. That's the traditional uh, illustration from the early sixties that they've redone. Okay, well, they're, look at this upside-down cross. They're, 
they're pushing the satanic angle a little too much, but I don't know. What is the print run of modern comics? I don't think they make many comics. And uh, Oh, speaking of Satanism, I found this and I wanted to read it. It's uh, Superman 666. So um, it's definitely a story I thought I would uh, be entertained by. Some of the stuff I already showed you. Yes. Watch. This is a cool Batman cover. This is my friend's comic, Channel Planet. You need to uh, seek this out. Oh, yeah. This is the free copy they left me the other night. It's uh, Channel Planet. If you, um... Oh, a romance comic, Teen Confessions. I showed you these last time. These are books I got from uh, from uh, Duncanville Books. I showed you these last Sunday, Saturday, something like that. All these, remember all these Tarzans? That's another name. Is it Tarzan or Tarzan? Tarzan, Tarzan. I say it both ways. the man hit the boy before they call him a man the answer my friend is many thousand the answer is many thousand how many thousands of comics do you own the average long box contains what about 350 comics so you can go from there so that means you can get what a shit. How many comics going on? These short boxes, depending on the company, are different lengths. I'm noticing there's not a consistency to them. <sighs> yeah, this is that record. Okay, we got to get the other room cleaned up because there's no telling when my friend will show up from uh, um, Abnormalville. You know, uh, Davy Crockett killed him a bar when he was only three. Look at that. He's challenging the bear to a fight. You're going to kill me? Kind of disturbing. Hey there, Mr. Barr. I'm, I reckon I'm gonna have to kill you. The happiest music and songs from Walt Disney. Okay. Well, I don't have my lighting system in the other room, but I'll bring my trusty flashlight, and that should. Uh, Provide a lighting uh, system for. for see, I got enough light for you. <laughs> this is uh, this is what it looks like when I'm driving. These fucking flares, because my eyes are going. Excuse me with the f word. I didn't mean to do that. Hmm. 
What the fuck just fell? Oh, the, oh shit. My guitar fell over, man. It was nice to see Dr. Zayas on the Halloween show. Nice of him to drop by, and Eric Brain, and um, Basil Orloff. I just really, uh, I, I can't find time to do these shows on a regular basis. I gotta, I'll try to make a point to do more. of Micronauts comics and I can't find it now. You know, I think at this point I need to just get these books put back up because uh, I don't know. Okay. Space Knight is visiting Power Man and Iron Fist. It looks like he's using his space gun to like make a naked woman appear. And they're kind of distracted by the naked woman. Maybe that's a. I'll have to read the story and see what happens there. Is an underdog comic. Yeah, I wish I had an empty box. I wish I don't have. these books over here. There's a Tom Strong cover that I can't, there's not enough light. Get this uh, flashlight going. Let's see what kind of lighting that provides. <laughs> Maybe too much, man. <laughs> um, yeah. I have a ring light downstairs that belongs to my wife, and I'm too lazy to go pull that out of the master bedroom and bring it up here. For right now, let's just get these comics off the floor so I can blow up this inflatable mattress because my friend's coming a little earlier today. He called us last night and let us know that. Here's the Savage She-Hulk number 12. How about that? How about that? I always have the best of intentions of getting things organized and then I put it on a time constraint and then I wind up just putting everything back. 
but not even that much more organized than it was originally. In fact, sometimes a little bit worse. But if I had more space, maybe things would be different. But, so, you know, we were thinking of moving, not just for more space, although that's part of it, but also for, because uh, you don't know what's going to go on uh, politically. It's just a scary time, and people that don't realize that this is a scary time are like, uh, there's something wrong with them, I think. there bunch of micronauts comics you know the micronauts comics can't be reprinted because they're characters that are owned by a toy company so um you kind of have to get those books because there's not going to be an omnibus or something like that. So I try to get Micronauts books when I can. Okay. Oh, I'm getting a low on battery, huh? And, uh,. Also, you should always get Warlord comics. And uh, I'm running across a lot of Warlord books lately. Um, I, I think I, if I don't have a complete run, I have real close to a complete run. I need to... I'm putting all my Warlord books in a, in a separate short box. And then I will be able to see whether I have all of them or not. I'm thinking I might. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. All right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, this, um, well, let me just go and tell you who I heard is going to appear in the uh, closing credits of uh, The Eternals. Um, if you don't want to know, just stop the video. Um, okay, one, two, three. I'm hearing Pip the Troll appears. There he is looking very Alfred E. Newman-like. And uh, so they're getting into, getting into Warlock. And um, that should be very interesting because Warlock is a comic that has never, uh, has kind of been in the cheap bins for a lot of years like The Eternals was. And maybe The Eternals will be again as, because I, I've yet to hear whether that movie's doing well or not. It, in fact, it just opened a few hours ago. And I guess I should keep my eyes, uh, my eyes, my head. Uh, I guess I should keep my, uh, what the hell is the word? I guess I should be, a, give it a chance, you know. But I just can't see myself, I still haven't gotten out to see the Master of Kung Fu movie. Which I guess they call Sh Shang-Chi, although I always called him Shang-Chi, and I probably always will call him Shang-Chi. I tried to briefly try to make a concession and, and try to pronounce it Shang-Chi. It just didn't feel right. Because who's to say they're right and I'm wrong? Because uh, I'm pretty sure my student pronounced it Shang-Chi. Uh, I had a Vietnamese student that wanted to be a Shang-Chi for Halloween. And I said, where did you hear about that comic book? And he says, what are you talking about? It's a vampire that hops around. And I said, oh, okay. I've heard it. I've seen 
clips from these Chinese vampire movies. So they're called Shang-Chi, and that's where the character was given his name from. And we don't know that because, uh, sorry I'm off camera. I'm trying to get things done, know what I mean? Know what I mean? Mother God, Mother Ever. I'm a little bit country. I'm a little bit rock and roll. I'm a little bit of Memphis, Nashville. Got a little bit of Motown in my soul. I don't know if it's bad or good, but I know my little soul. What the fuck is this shit? Fantasy Masterpieces, Marvel Tales, Daredevil, and the Black Widow. I'll show that next time. Come back for the next exciting episode, and I'll be back later on this evening on another person's channel doing voices. That's at least the plan. I have a plan to stick it to the man. I'm lifting these boxes, man, like nothing. Because I lift these boxes like I'm the gray man. Because the chiropractor has healed me, but now I'm going to have to pay him. That's going to be like three payments of like 400 bucks, man. Plus my engine going bad and having to pay property taxes property taxes for this house that I like I've got to convince my wife on this house uh, are half of what we're paying now and hopefully with my wife's name on on the deed of the new house um, she's uh, disabled so I think we cut you a discount if you're disabled on these property taxes, I just don't like the idea of property taxes because then you don't, you feel like you never really truly own your house. You know? It's un American, man. It's un American. All right, so I'm unfolding the uh, inflatable mattress for my pal Gerald that comes here every Friday evening. He's a great old friend of 12 years or more. He bailed me out a million times. He's fixed my car. He's fixed my air conditioning, my heater when it wasn't working. He's always there with his Felix the Cat. It's like he has Felix the Cat's magic bag. He can pull anything out of his magic van that has like over a million miles. Okay, I'm going to blow this up, so... A dream about this last night this Power Rangers nightlight why did I dream about it it's weird man uh, you know that yellow Power Ranger is a guy in Japan but when they do the American version they just make it a girl So they had to hire a flat-chested girl so that the Japanese footage would match up with her. At least that's what the original Power Rangers in the 90s was like. Well, I gotta line this up. So I have a Halo, Saint Gratu. Hello, I am Saint Gratu. Patron saint of funny books. Well, fantastic. What time is it, man? Oh, I gotta 
I got stuff to do. I got sent this from a friend on Instagram. Uh, I've got to frame it. That's on my to-do to -do, to -do, to -do list. Oh, there's uh, something that was given to me. This is the first Silver Age appearance of Two-Face and World's Finest number 173. A friend of mine bought it at Duncanville Books and then I guess he realized he shouldn't have bought it. So he says, here, you have it and just pay me back whenever you can. So it wasn't really a gift. It was sort of a... One of those gifts you have to pay for. Okay. All right. The mattress is blown up. The pillow's in place. I will see you this evening on Inklantine's channel and be seeing you.